Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and here let's check out the awesome power of imitation learning using Unity ML Agents. First, if you're not familiar with ML Agents, that is Unity's machine learning AI toolkit, I cover the detailed getting started guide that goes through the whole installation process and how to use it, so go watch that video if you haven't already and check the full machine learning playlist in the description. ML Agents supports two types of learning, reinforcement learning and imitation learning. Now, imitation learning is how you can teach your AI directly how to behave in order to achieve a certain goal, meaning that instead of trying to work by just randomly testing actions, it will instead try to imitate what the player did and build upon it. So think of it as if you were trying to play a game. In one method, you just randomly push every button on the controller until something happens, and in another method, you have someone who knows how to play teach you what the buttons do and how to push them in the correct order to get the reward. Now let's first think about the limitations when using reinforcement learning and then we can see how imitation learning is an awesome very powerful tool. In the getting started video I cover the most basic type of learning, just reinforcement learning where the agent learns how to do something based on the rewards that it gets. Now that method works great when you have a relatively simple scenario, for example in that video we made a simple agent and it wants to touch the goal, it's pretty simple so it can easily complete the task. It spawns in a random position and moves towards the goal. So that one works out great. But over here I have another more complex demo. I'm currently controlling the character using heuristics. So the goal is to get into this button. So I can move the character, go in there. Then I press a button on my keyboard to push the actual button. And as soon as I do, a food pal gets spawned. So now I need to go there and touch it. And there you go, I win. Now for you, assuming that you are a human being, this is a pretty simple task. Even if I don't give you the instructions, you can probably figure it out after a few seconds. But for an AI that randomly pushes buttons until it gets a reward, then this scenario is extremely complex. Just think, in order for the AI to complete the whole task, first it needs to trigger the right random actions to get it to the button, then it needs to again randomly push the button, and then again it needs to trigger the right random combination of actions that gets it to the food pellet. So as you can see, that's a ton of very specific random actions that need to happen in a very specific sequence. So the odds of that happening based on pure luck alone are extremely tiny, so essentially you'd have better luck just getting the AI to play the lottery. So that's where imitation learning comes in. Instead of the AI trying random actions until something happens, we teach it how it should complete the task and the AI learns from that. And just like with reinforcement learning, using ML agents to achieve this is quite simple. Again, if you haven't seen the getting started video, go and watch that. In there, I go through all of the basics on getting started and the logic for how it all works. In order to do imitation learning, it is pretty much the same thing that we saw for reinforcement learning. So over here, I have my scene and I can control the character using heuristics. So the agent class is already nicely implemented. Let's look at it. So I've got my environment and inside I've got the agent. And here it is, the various behavior parameters. So very simple stuff. And let's inspect the food agent script. So here is the script. And again, remember how reinforcement learning works, which is first the AI takes some observations of its environment, then it takes a decision, it makes an action and sees if it gets a reward. That's the reinforcement learning cycle. Over here, I have my food agent class. And as you can see, the code is pretty simple. So if you watch the other video, then all of this should be quite familiar. First up here, we have the on episode begin function. So this is where we set up the scene with some randomness so that the AI doesn't learn how to solve just one specific set of positions. So we randomize the player position and then on the food button script, when we reset the button, we're also randomizing the position. So both the player and the button get random positions. That's all we do on the on episode begin. Then we have our collect observations function. So here, in terms of observations, first I'm giving it the state of the button. So if the button can be used, then the machine learning algorithm receives a 1, and if not, it receives a 0. Then I'm also giving it the direction towards the food button. Then another observation for the current state of the food, so if it has been spawned or not. And if the food has been spawned, then I give it the direction towards the food, and if not, just two zeros. So those are all of the observations. We just have over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 floats. Then down here for the actions. I am using discrete actions to move the character and here they have some very simple, very straightforward actions. So just don't move, move left, move right, move back or move forward. So it's a very basic movement controller over here modifying the rigid body velocity and then another action for the is use button down. So when this one is set to one, then that is the agent using the use button and when that happens then it simply looks for objects around the agent and finds a button to push. So if it can't find a button, it tries to push that button. So I covered this simple way of pushing buttons in the Ways to Open Doors video. 
So those are all the actions. And then for the rewards, over here we have a reward when it successfully uses the button. And then down here, when we consume the food, we also get another reward. And lastly, over here on the on action received, on every action, I'm also giving it a negative reward in order to essentially encourage the agent to finish as quickly as possible. Now, one important thing is that I only added this negative reward to training after it was already succeeding in achieving the task. So I didn't start with this one by default. Essentially, in the beginning, you want to help your AI to learn, and then later on, you can focus on actually optimizing. Okay, so here is the script. As you can see, it's pretty small, pretty simple. First, let's actually look at what happens if we try training our AI using just reinforcement learning. And by the way, here's a quick tip that someone mentioned in the comments on the previous video. If you go into the folder where you have your project, you can just go up here into the actual path, and in here you type CMD. And when you do, it opens up the command prompt directly onto that folder. So very useful tip. Now here, let's try doing the normal training. Okay, so there it is, training is currently running. And you can see it's happening exactly as you would expect it. So the agent is just trying random actions which cause it to randomly move around. So again, remember in reinforcement learning, it's very important to get a reward. And in this case, the agent is only getting a reward when it pushes the button. So when trying these random actions, the agent needs to be lucky enough in order to push the right actions to move it towards the button and then actually push the button. So achieving that first part is actually somewhat doable, so it might get lucky and achieve that. But even if it does achieve doing that, then it will learn to go towards the button and push it. But then it's going to have a lot of trouble to go towards the pellet after pushing the button. Now, again, you could technically leave it like this and through sheer chance alone, then maybe in a million steps, you would get lucky and complete the whole task. But the odds of that happening are really slim. So this is just basic reinforcement learning. It tries random actions and hopes that it achieves something. So here it already got lucky and hit the button, so now it learned to go towards the button and push it. But again, achieving the whole task is going to be very difficult. So now let's give this AI some help and show it how this task should be completed. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. Now, as I said, that one is very simple. All we need to do is go into our agent. And let me actually go inside the prefab so I modify all of the agents. So here I am in the prefab and select the agent. And then I just have to go down here and going to add another component. Go inside ML agents. And in here, we're going to add a demonstration recorder. Then here we see some fields. So first of all, we've got a toggle to enable or disable recording. So just go ahead, toggle that so we start recording. Then for the number of steps, this is in case you want to limit how many steps you record. But if you just want to continue recording until you stop the game, then just leave it at zero. Then we've got a demonstration name. So let's name this our food agent demo. And then directory where you want to save it. So let's just name it demos. All right, so that's all the setup for the demonstration. And now how you record is very simple. Just make sure that the agent is over here set to heuristic. Okay, heuristic only. And all I have to do is just run the scene as normal. So here I am, and now my actions are being recorded. So essentially, the AI is now looking at everything that I do, all of the actions I take, and all of the observation values as I take them. Now all I have to do is really just teach it correctly. So I guess that means that if I wanted to be mean to the poor AI, I would just ram into a wall nonstop, and now the poor AI would learn just to slam into a wall. Now that's probably not very useful, so let's actually teach it how to achieve the task. So here I just move towards the button, I press the keyboard button to trigger the action and now go towards the pellet and consume it. And now again, go into that one, press the button and so on and so on. And essentially this way, the agent, the AI is actually looking at me, looking at how I achieve this, analyzing all of the actions that I'm taking and all of the various observations. So that's pretty much all it takes to record the demo. You just complete this as many times as you can. Essentially, the more that I give it, the more the agent will learn. And then in order to stop recording, you just simply exit play mode. Okay, recording is done. And if we go into our project files, we can see over here we have a folder called demos. And then inside we have our food agent demo. So just go ahead, copy this one inside our assets. So there it is. And here in our project files, we can see our demo. And if we select it, we can look in the inspector and see the various stats. So you can see how many steps it recorded, how many episodes, what was the mean reward, what is the size of the observations and the various actions. So there's this demo that I just made where I trained for a tiny bit, not really very optimally. And then over here, I have another demo. And in this one, I train more properly. So you can see the main reward almost close to two, which is essentially one for that one and one for hitting the pellet. So again, the more data you give it and the better the data, the better the AI will actually learn. 
So now the next step is just to tell the AI to use this demo to learn from. And for that, we need to go into the config file. So here I set it up exactly like I covered on the getting started video. So I've got a folder for my configs and inside I've got my food agent.yaml. And here is the config with all of the hyperparameters. And now in order to use imitation learning, we go down here inside the reward signals and we're going to add another section. And this one, we're going to name it Gale. Gale stands for Generative Adversarial Imitation Learning, meaning that the AI will try to beat the demo that you give it. So at a high level, how it works is by creating a second learning algorithm called the discriminator. And the goal of that one is to figure out if a certain action came from the agent or from the demo. So essentially over time, our agent will learn how to behave more like the demo in order to trick the discriminator. And again, you can combine this with extrinsic rewards, which essentially means that it works on top of reinforcement learning. So after it learns how to behave like the demo, it will continue improving until it becomes essentially superhuman. So we add this scale section, and then here we have a whole bunch of parameters. You can check the docs to see all of the various parameters and what they do. The main ones that we need are the strength. So this is how much the demo will impact how the agent behaves. So if you want it to act exactly like the demo, you give it 1.0 but that's probably a bit too much. We still want the agent to learn to get better than the demo. So let's start off at 0.5. And then the other parameter that we absolutely need is the demo underscore path. And this is just the path towards the demo. So here in the project folder, we've got the demos and inside we've got the food agent demo. So this is the one that I prepared previously. So let's use this one since it has more values. So just paste this path in here, that's it. So essentially all it takes is adding these parameters and then all of a sudden you've just added imitation learning. Now there's actually two types of imitation learning that you can use. So there's Gale here and there's another one called BC or behavioral cloning. So that one goes outside of the reward signal. So not in here, but rather down here. This one is named behavioral cloning. And inside we've also got these two. So we have a strength, let's also put it at 0.5 and then again, a demo path. Now, Gale, like I said, works by trying to trick a discriminator into pretending that the actions came from the demo, whereas BC simply tries to copy exactly what you did. Now, the limitations of BC is that it can never get better than the demos. So in order to get the best results, you really just combine all three. So first using BC, it learns to act exactly like you. Then when combined with Gale, it learns to act similarly to you while achieving the same goal. And when combined with extrinsic rewards, it continues improving upon those two. And that's how you get superhuman learning. Then essentially the trick is just to play around with all of these parameters. So at the start, we want the agent to learn from the demos. So we can put both of these with a pretty high strength, but then we want the agent to go beyond the demo. So after it learns the basics, then we can reduce this to something like 0.1. So it gets more impacted by the actual extrinsic rewards. Okay, so now it's time to check out our AI and see it learning using imitation learning. Now, before we do some mass learning, let's go inside our prefab and in here, let's make sure that we disable recording on demonstrations. So just untick this and let's set the behavior type back into default so that it trains. And now let's run the same logic using our configuration.yaml and food agent, let's name it imitation. Okay, so let's run. And here, let's also enable all of them. So we've got mass training and head on play. And yep, there it is. The agent is now learning to play using our demos as a demonstration. So you can see some of them already managed to hit and grab the food pellet. Now here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Five of them managed to get the pellet and two more. And this one actually completed the whole task. So as you can see, this one is already doing quite a lot better than our previous training, which was just trying random actions. So quite a handful of them have already learned to press the button and go towards the pellet. Look, that one almost went perfectly. So all of the logic is working and our model is currently being built. Now we can go and look at TensorBoard to visualize the learning. So here it is and we can view the graphs and we can see that it's already working. So in the beginning, as it was trying just pretty much random things, look at this, it wasn't getting anything. So a reward of minus one. And then as it started to behave more and more like the demos, you can see it skyrocketed the, the reward right away. And over here, the episode length. So essentially it's learning how to achieve the task quicker and quicker. So after just a little bit of time, we can clearly see the results. So most of the agents have already learned how to do that complex task. So they go towards the button, they press the button, then they go towards the food pellet. So let's stop training and let's go inside the results to grab our brain model. Here it is. And yep, there's the agent using our model in order to achieve the tasks. So he goes towards the button, pushes the button and then goes towards the food pellet. So look at that, isn't that awesome? At first the agent couldn't do anything. It would just randomly move around. 
And now, thanks to our demonstration, we have taught the agent how to achieve this relatively complex task. So it goes towards the button, pushes the button, then goes towards the food pellet. Here I have another brain that I trained for quite a bit longer. And as you can see, this one is quite a lot faster at achieving the goal. So it goes directly towards the button, doesn't even hesitate. As soon as it gets inside the button, it triggers the button and then goes straight towards the food pellet. And again, we can still see the magic of machine learning, which is remember that we didn't write any code telling the agent how to move or how to press a button. The agent learned all of those actions by itself with the help of the human player teaching it how to play. So here we have imitation learning. It's a massively powerful tool and something that will greatly help you when training your agents in more and more complex scenarios. As long as you give it enough data in your demo, you can teach your AI to solve pretty much any problem. So stay tuned for more machine learning videos where I will be applying this to even more complex scenarios. You can check the full machine learning playlist linked in the description. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found the video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.